Hello, Aries. Welcome to Dove and Serpent Tarot. If Aries is your sun, moon, or rising sign, this is your reading. Please hit the like button, leave a comment, consider subscribing to the channel, especially if this reading resonates with you. And if there is anything you would like me to pray over, or meditate upon, or send positive energy toward, please let me know. Okay. Now, this is going to be a general reading, so try to be open and receptive to whatever may come through during our time together. I am merely the messenger. And I ask you to connect directly with each of these cards and use your own intuition to take you beyond the details that I might provide. And remember, Aries, that the most important part of any tarot reading is you. And we begin with a nine of swords. Okay, that it's not as bad as it looks. All right, don't don't freak out. We're gonna we'll handle this. Um, there's always going to be a challenge that needs to be overcome. And look at that. This is exactly what I mean. With these air energy cards here, these are the this is the challenge. But look at this strength going forward. So I think all of this is moving behind us. Whatever is whatever is challenging you in your life right now, whatever has kind of um, got you down, so to speak, I think we're overcoming that. But let's continue with the path of the serpent here. Oh, look at that Ace of Cups at the end. Oh, yeah. Yeah, This uh, these challenges are, are no match for you. I think we're finding our strength and we're, we're going to be happy. All right, let's select our mystery card, bonus card, confirmation card. We're going to use the Smith Weight Tarot. And this is just one card that we select randomly, and we're going to set it aside. We'll put the frog on top. Now we're still looking for a name for the frog, so if you have any suggestions, please um, leave them in the comments below. Um, but hopefully that card will tie everything together, you know, and, and give us the confirmation that we need at the end of the reading. So let's take a look at what we have. We've got all of this air, kind of nasty air right here, right? Um, but we're going to deal with it. We're going to get a proper perspective on it, and I think we are going to use it to fuel our strength and our progress. So we've got the air. We've got some water. We've got some earth. Now, as far as fire, as far as major arcana goes, we, all we have is this strength card. So all we really have to rely on right now is this strength, is our own inner strength, um, the strength that we are reminded of through our support system, through our relationship with ourself, with others, and with God, goddess, deity, right? Spirit, whatever you want to call it. Uh, that, that higher strength. But let's start at the beginning. Let's start with this air energy, okay? Um, first, in the recent past of Five of Swords, I think that there's something we've recently um, we've recently suffered a loss of some kind, okay? And I don't want to dwell too much on this. If this is resonating with you, you already know what this is. There's no sense in discussing it further. Um, it's behind us, okay? It's it's already happened. Um, I think that we we suffered some kind of a loss or a defeat. Let's just let's leave it at that. Um, the thing with the Five of Swords, though, is we don't want to continue letting this event, this set of circumstances, this whatever you know, this energy. We don't want to allow it to keep pulling us down further and further right it's still affecting us that's why it's that's why it's in this position because it's kind of the issue that we're bringing to the present moment this is something that already happened but the energy is still affecting you it's kind of what you brought into the reading today all right and i think that it's still causing some trouble here's that nine of swords in the kind of present moment um this is still the 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 pain that you're feeling from whatever that five of swords is whatever that loss that defeat could be you lost a job, um, could be you know, could be anything. I don't I don't want to speculate. It's something that's still affecting you now, and I almost feel like 
we're having trouble getting over that event because we maybe feel responsible, we're kind of blaming ourselves, um, or we're still feeling the pain of it. We're still feeling upset by it, hurt by it. Maybe it was the actions of someone else. Maybe it could be an air sign person, right? We've got this queen of swords here, so it could be an air sign person, but not necessarily. I think what the queen of swords here is talking about is the need for us to, in order to transmute this event, these circumstances, these feelings, this energy, transmute it into, well, into this Ace of Cups, into this Holy Grail situation, into real happiness and progress and pleasure and really the healing that's going to come. In order to transmute it into that, we need to take a different viewpoint. We need to get a different perspective of what's going on. Okay. So since these two cards are together, I feel like we're being, we're still being injured by this situation. We're still feeling the pain from it. But if we look at it a different way, maybe we could see how it's not our fault or how it was kind of unpreventable, unavoidable. There's nothing that we did wrong. Nothing that we could have, you know, prevented had we acted differently, right? So it's gaining a perspective on the situation that's going to try to get us out from behind or in front of, I guess, these nine swords, right? Because these are just doing more and more damage to you energetically, emotionally. This is really, um, this is some energy that's going to hold us down. That's going to prevent us from moving forward. And I don't know what the situation was. I don't know what had happened. I don't know what this is all about. But I do know that in order to get to this strength, in order to find the strength to overcome this situation, we need this queen of swords. See, this is the way... The queen is crossing over these swords to get to this strength. So we're going from the defeat, from the change in the circumstances, whatever this loss was. We're, we're flying over all of this, the, really the kind of torment of it, and we're finding strength. But to get through that, we also have to deal with the, the kind of inner and outer energies. The three of swords, for instance. This is a situation where you're still, you're kind of caught in this loop, right? You're caught in this loop of these three swords energies, these three air cards. The three of swords is us reliving the moment. We just, it seems like we can't stop thinking about it, right? The more we think about it, the more we perhaps do damage to ourselves energetically, emotionally, mentally. Right through whatever whatever mechanism, if it's guilt or shame or regret or or you know whatever it is, because of that past event. So we're caught in this in this cycle. We're caught in this loop of energies here, and we just we keep we keep thinking about it. It's like we can't get it off of our mind. So I think really what's needed there is the water energy that's within the queen. Even this is a swords card, but there's water there. It's the queen of swords. So we need to find some stability within us by looking at the situation differently, forgiving, right? The queen of swords is very much about forgiveness. It's about being very open and honest with how we feel about it, but not, not holding on to it in such a way that we're going to continue to do damage. So it's about, it's about forgiveness for your sake, right? For the sake of your stability. So whatever is going on, we either have to forgive the other person, forgive ourselves, accept the situation as being kind of part of, you know, part of life, part of the, the universe, right? The, the um, greater plan, if you believe in that sort of thing. Whatever we have to do in order to get out of this loop, right? And the Queen of Swords is very much about patience and acceptance and forgiveness and understanding. 
We don't have to like the situation. We don't, we don't have to, um, we don't have to tolerate, you know, any kind of offense. We don't have to forgive people necessarily in a way that enables them to continue doing something to us or, you know, uh, offending us or harming us in any way. But I think for your sake, we have to try to let this past situation go now. If you're in any kind of danger now, um, please contact the appropriate authorities in your area. Um, there is a um, mental health phone number in the description box of my videos. Uh, down at the bottom, just scroll all the way down, and you'll find uh, a phone number, at least for here in the U.S. Um, take advantage of whatever resources are available to you, okay, please. The primary thing here is to minimize the further impact on us emotionally, spiritually, from whatever this past situation is, right? We got to do what we got to do to get out of this loop, right? And this is changing our perspective, right? Seeing things for what they really are, not trying to sugarcoat anything, seeing it for what it is, but having the acceptance and the understanding and the patience to stabilize our own emotions so that we can move forward. We're not doing it for anyone else's sake. We're not enabling uh, anyone to continue harming us or anyone else. This is about you achieving some stability so that we can find strength, so that we can heal and be productive and move on with our life, right? So really we're looking, we're trying to achieve this Four of Cups. This is stability. This is a boat that's not sinking, right? It's stable. It's a, a seaworthy vessel. Now, we don't know where it's sailing. It hasn't set off yet into, you know, toward any kind of exciting adventure. But it is stable. It's not going down. There are no holes in the boat. Right? This is... This is where we need to get internally. Right? We need to get this stability. You see, we have... We have these uh, odd-numbered cards. Three, a five, and nine. And this is a lot of motion. This is a lot of movement. It's a cycle that just keeps, it's a vicious circle. It just keeps going around and around and around. We need stability. See, this is a four. It's an even number. It's a stable state. This is all motion. And this is not, not good motion, right? So we need the stability here. Yeah. This is our, this is our goal for right now. And to do that, we definitely need strength. This is the only major arcana card here. Um, interesting that this comes right around the time of the Lion's Gate, uh, the opening of the portal. This um, this represents that. This is a, a Leo energy. Okay. And this is the strength that we need to step into our God, Goddess given, you know, power, the magical ability that we're all endowed with. Right, the spirit that we all are, um, and and use that to manifest. So this is the strength that we need just to get up in the morning and speak our truth, to speak our our affirmation, to say the magic words that will create the future that we want. Right, and when we're stuck in this kind of a thing, it feels very difficult to even wake up in the morning and say something positive. You know. Today I will go outside and sit in the grass, you know, or, or whatever. Today I will, um, you know, today I'll, I'll reach out to my friends. When we're in this cycle of air energy, it's very difficult to have any positive thoughts or even to affirm any positive intentions for the day. But that's what we need to do. Right? That's what we need to do right now. I think this is the perfect time of the year right now with this whole Lionsgate thing. This is the perfect moment for us to realize our strength and our power and, and take advantage of the, the cosmic alignments, we can call them, so that we can get away from this air energy and start to heal and 
um, you know, continue to be productive. So let's go to the Five of Cups over here, general energy. I think this is really, this is how we're looking at the path of the dove, right, with the Five of, of Cups. And this, to me, this makes sense because we're looking at this situation and we're having a lot of emotions, right? That's the deal with the five. We're, we're seeing this as a very emotionally unstable situation. What we want in, internally, what, what we're really kind of desiring right now is just stability. A boat that's not rocking, not sinking. But the way we're seeing things is through this five of cups lens. It's just turbulent waters, turbulent waters. And that's because of all of this. So all of this, I think, is really, we're looking at it like this. And that it that's not an inaccurate way to see it, right? But we need to shift our focus away, I think, away from, from just, uh, experiencing this as some really, really rough and turbulent waters, that's very true. Let's look toward the stability that we want, right? If we envision that, visualize that, um, try to affirm that, speak that intention, then we can get to the stability, we can get to the strength to continue healing and moving forward. So yes, we're looking at things accurately, but do we need to keep looking at it that way? Let's look, let's look the other way, right? Let's take advantage of this strength energy. Now in the environment, we see the three of pentacles. This is in your relationships or in your environment. It's kind of the dynamic between yourself and what's around you, people, places, things, your pets, your plants. Um, and this is a real uh, creative, um, creative card. This is kind of saying the best thing that you could do now is to uh, begin the work, begin the process of building things, doing things. Get outside and, um, you know, do the planting that you wanted to do or mow the lawn or fix the fence or whatever, you know. Get out and do these activities that you've been maybe putting off. Um, because of this situation, perhaps we've not really had much desire to get out and do do anything. So this card's about creating, right? If you have uh, some paints and some canvas in your other room that are just sitting there, now's the time to go and start using it, right? Start creating something. Um, it could be anything. Start writing again, right? Um, focus on, on your business, um, you know, uh, Immerse yourself in your work a little bit, um, just to to be, to get back into that creative cycle. Whether it's work or at home, in your relationships, whether it's something kind of extracurricular, some kind of avocation, um, getting back into your community work, your volunteer work. That's cards about doing things, physical things, you know. Whatever it might be, go for a walk, go for a run. It's activity, yeah. And I think this is the best way to kind of start activating this, this portal, this strength, right? We have to shift how we're looking at things. We could be stuck in a five of cups and we could be looking at this all day. Nothing's gonna change. Unless we start changing things in the physical world, in our environment, in the literal kind of physical manifested plane. We start doing things other than just looking and feeling and going around in this circle mentally, emotionally. To really activate this strength, to activate your own innate powers of manifestation, we have to start um, moving in the physical world, right? Doing things uh, toward uh, an objective, even if that objective is just to um, just to initiate things, right? Just to be active. And that leads us up here to the Knight of Pentacles. So this now is someone that has the knowledge of this far, 
far-reaching vision. Their ability to manifest, not just to activate energy now in the present, to get up and start doing things and to mow the lawn or whatever, but to see how their activities now are going to extend into the future and how their life can just expand and expand and expand. This is somebody that can basically see the future, someone that knows, right? This is someone that knows. They can see the, they, they see the blank canvas and they can already envision what the final piece is going to look like. Yeah. The canvas of your, your future. This card's also in the position of what we don't want. You know, we don't, I think part of us, you know, the part that's already here and five of cups doesn't want to think about the future, doesn't want to, doesn't want to look at what could be down the road because we're still, we're stuck here. So if we don't start activating this, probably this, you know, trinity here, we're going to be stuck in this air energy and we're going to be looking at things um, from the turbulent waters. We're not going to want to see, we're not going to want to admit our own strength. We're not going to want to get up and do anything. We're certainly not going to want to, um, to plan for the future or to see the future or to... Um, to have this vision of the rest of our lives because we're stuck here. This is what matters now, right? So that's why I think this card is here. It's in the position of what we don't want, but it's what we need. We need to understand what it is that we're trying to create long term so that we can start doing some of that work now, right? And I think through this whole process, we get a little bit of this, right? This Ace of Cups, beautiful. This is the healing water. This is the beginning of, of healing, of a restoration of happiness, of joy, pleasure, of productivity, of creativity, right? This is the water that's going to um, just kind of overflow into every aspect of your life if we let it, if we let it. Things are so agitated now with this Five of Cups being stuck in this loop of air energy that something as calm and as beautiful as this Ace of Cups is just kind of, well, it's part of this thing here that we just kind of don't, we don't want. There's part of us that doesn't want that. But this is what we need. And it's kind of that, it's that idea that, you know, you, it may sound like a grueling kind of suggestion, but once you start doing it, you realize that it's really, it's really enjoyable. You know, it's like when you, you know, you want to go to the gym or you start working out or start running or whatever it is. And you just have that, it's difficult to get started. Right? It sounds awful. But once you get into it, you're like, Hey, this is kind of fun uh, because you start to see the benefits, you know, just right away. You start to see how this water energy is slowly, um, flowing into every aspect of your life. You feel better, a little bit better physically, mentally, emotionally, you feel a little bit more, more spiritual, a little bit more light, right? A little bit more optimistic, a little bit more hopeful. And this is the, this is the beginning of that, right? It's the ace. It's the, it's still the seed. This can become everything and anything. So it's very important to have this water energy, especially when we're trying to do this work and manifest a future. Well, it's got to be a future that feels right. That feels good, right? And this isn't just temporary fulfillment of desires. This is the certainty that you're on the right path, that this is a, a, a spiritual path for you. Even though this is with this earth energy, right? This Leo energy and this earth energy here, it's still, this is a very spiritual path. It has to be a path of, of healing right? I think that's really the first kind of step here is to, um, to recover from what this air energy represents, whatever that situation was, and begin to move forward. Now, I'm going to look at the mystery card. 
We are indeed still looking for a name for our frog friend. Thank you, frog. Um, gosh, I don't know. This, is, this seems like such a heavy set of cards already. Um, we could get more water energy. We could... Um, I don't know. Um, the water energy would be good. Some stable earth energy. Some stable air energy would be good, but I don't really want any more air energy. Right? So, uh, what do we need? I don't know. I don't know. Um, I'm just going to say the fool, right? Joker's. Joker's wild. Fool. Be whatever we want it to be. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. Oh, oh look at that. Fool. Yeah, um, it's, I don't I might quit doing tarot after this one. Um, this is anything we want. This is the, uh, this is the air energy, right? Fool is all air. It's this kind of, um, it's a selfless, expansive awareness. Um, so uh, maybe this is perfect. Maybe this is literally what we need to clear out all of this all of this air energy here, the fool's just going to come in and just kind of sweep it all away. It's just that, just that amazing breeze that just clears out the valley and everything is beautiful. You know, this is also kind of, um, this is also the prospect for, uh, for the future. You know, this is basically saying that whatever's going on here with this earth energy and this water energy and this creative manifesting leo energy the the possibilities are endless infinite right this air energy is expanding in all directions equally um without a care in the world right so this is this is hopeful in the sense that you can build any kind of life that you want. Whatever you want your future to be, it can be. This really is the wild card, you know, that, that can become any card we need at the moment. So what do we need right now? Well, I think we need the strength. We have this one. We need the strength energy. Maybe we need a little bit of empress energy. Maybe this can be our empress for a time. I think this is also a card that just literally says, hey, get outside and play. Just go have fun. Just get out of the house. Get out of this air energy. Get out of this, you know, turbulent waters. Get out of this mess. And just literally get up and go outside and do something fun. Right? Go to the park with your kids, grandkids, your nephews and nieces or whoever. Just go do something that's going to make you smile. You know? I think that's the best thing that we could do. And then maybe through that process, you'll figure out, well, what do you want this wild card to be? What do we need? What do we actually need right now? Once we get away from this, the air energy, we get this higher perspective, we can kind of see things. Maybe we need to go take a break, go out and play. And then we can kind of get this higher perspective and think, okay, what do I really need right now? Yeah. Yeah, I think the fool is the way. Uh, anyway, we're going to do an extended reading. Aries, if you want to stick around, just click up here. Uh, that'll give you access to all of the extended readings, not just for Aries, but for every sign. I encourage you to cross-watch, check your other placements. Uh, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. Thank you for being here. And thank you for letting me read for you.